Hi everyone, today's House of Peace teaching is called The Importance of a Supernatural Church and it's equivalent to the importance of a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit, anointed and moves in the power of God. For those of you who don't understand. <laughs> okay, so if you go to the book of Matthew chapter 9 verses 20 and 22, that's where it talks about the woman with the issue of blood that it says that she had this issue for 12 years. No doctor can solve her problem. They couldn't tell her what it was. And because of this problem, she was separated from everyone else because she was considered unclean. Now, this woman had tried everything and, and nothing can heal her. Now she hears that this Jesus that everyone is saying is healing is coming. So she decides, I'm going to touch this Jesus. And when I do, I will be healed. It wasn't, she didn't have a doubt. She knew within her. She said, I am going to sacrifice myself Go around all these people I can't be around. Do what I've never done. Touch this man. And I know that when I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. And so she goes in the midst of the crowd and she touches Jesus's garment. And it says that the second she does this, Jesus feels that power is taken out of him. And he turns around and he says, who touched me? And when his disciples hear him, they thought it was an odd thing because there's millions of people touching him. Like there's a crowd of people, maybe not millions, but a crowd of people touching him. And they say, uh, Jesus, everyone is touching you. What do you mean? And he says, so, it's power. Someone touched me and power came out. And this woman knew it was her. She knew the faith he's talking about is me. I'm that, you know, like an outlet of electricity, positive and negative and, and it, psh, the spark. She's like, I'm that spark. I'm the one that had the faith. I'm the one that took power from him. So she said, it, you know, like it's, it's I. And he, he tells her, your faith has made you well. So her faith. So we see that Jesus, he wasn't even trying. To, he was filled with power. He was not even trying. He didn't even, he was just walking. But not everyone received power from him. It was the one that was connected, the one that had the faith, the one that touched believing. She was able to withdraw power from what he was carrying. He was filled with power. Because you have to understand that Jesus spent time with the Father. And what's going to get you the anointing is when you spend communion with God. It is when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're filled with the Holy Spirit when you seek the Father, when you spend time with God, when you when you worship, when you pray, when you intercede, when you invest. There's many preachers today that go up and they depend on a gift. They depend on, on their eloquency. They depend on the charisma, but they haven't spent hours with the Father. And because of this, they don't have enough they're not filled enough. They're, they're not able to impart that power. They might have a little bit to be able to, to for themselves, but they don't have anything to give. You cannot give from what you don't have. So that's why the Bible says that we have to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not just about one time being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's about continually being filled with the Holy Spirit. So there is many man-made programs in many churches. And because of this, sadly, we do not see the power of God being manifested. People go inside of the temple. They go sick and they leave sick. They go in depressed and they leave depressed. They don't leave delivered. They go in with problems. They leave with the same problems. They go in without being filled with the Holy Spirit. They leave without being filled with the Holy Spirit. But this was never the will of God. The will of God is that he says, in my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, you shall heal the sick. In my name, he gave us power. He left the, the Holy Spirit. What a gift. He said, you will not be alone. I will leave with you the, 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 the Holy Spirit. He will be your teacher. He will be your guide. He's the one. When the apostles would pray, they would pray, Father, use us to heal. How many men and women of God that are in high positions ask God, God, use me to heal. Use me to demonstrate your power. This was the will of God. This was the will of God. Jesus says, greater things you will do than I did. What greater things are we doing? And some people say, oh, but that was in the old times. Just like some people say, oh, yeah, but God used to talk in the old times. They think that God's voice ran out or that, you know, the creator can not talk. No, 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 no. God's voice did not run out and the power of God did not run out. And the Holy Spirit is still on earth. So the same Holy Spirit that used the apostles back then are still using the men and women of God. And if that's so, then how come Pa, that wasn't one of the apostles that walked with Jesus, still moved in the power of God? Because if you go to the book of Acts 19, 11, 12, it says that God worked unusual miracles by Paul's hands. And even people would bring handkerchiefs to him so that he can pray over them and the people could get healed he wasn't one of the 12 and after judas the one who replaced him was matthias it was not Ju it was not pa pa was another apostle that god chose after the 12 apostles because some people say no it's only the 12 apostles no 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 no. there was other apostles after the 12 and there's still apostles that god is raising up because god says that he rose up what the five ministries and he talks about the five ministries he talks about the five 
ministry. So I don't understand why people want to change things and people want to make it seem that God can't heal anymore or that God, you know, the Bible says, has God, has God's hand fallen or something like that? Has it fallen short? What? He's not able to, to heal anymore. He's not God anymore. What do you think that he went to sleep on us? God did not go to sleep on us. He's waiting for us to stop believing the lies of the devil that has told us this and this and this and this and to believe the word of God, to seek God, to spend time with the Father, to be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's when the anointing is going to come in and it says that the anointing is the one that breaks the yoke. It is God the one that transforms hearts. It's not a preacher saying eloquent words. No, it's spirit-filled words that come out that bring forth conviction and god is the one that transforms a heart that we are renewed by the by the word of god but it's not it's not just any word <laughs> it's holy spirit filled word it's anointed words you understand so there's a lot of people nowadays that they don't understand this and because of this sadly our churches are being replaced by man-made programs charisma gifts but there is no power there is no anointing demons are not even afraid to go inside of the church they're not afraid because they're not going to get cast out so who cares though when the people leave they're going to continue to do drugs when the people leave that are bound to cigarettes they're going to continue to smoke when the people leave that are addicted to sex they're going to continue to have illicit sex they're, they don't care because there's nothing confronting their sin so sandra how do i know when i'm in a church that is holy spirit filled Oh, I'm glad you asked. Four characters. Number one, it has character, meaning it's not going to compromise, meaning it's going to preach the truth. It doesn't matter if people get offended. Jesus did not care if people will get offended. As a matter of fact, there was once that a lot of people started leaving him and he looked to his, his disciples and he says, well, what, you want to leave too? Because if you want to leave, you know, it's like saying there's the door and the disciple says, where will we go? Only you have words of life. Do you understand? So Jesus was not afraid when people will be offended. Because he knew that the truth will set you free. And he knew that not everyone wants to, to, to hear the truth. Because even the rich man, when he came to Jesus and he says, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus told him this, this, and this, and this. He says, oh, I already do that. And Jesus says, okay, there's one thing you haven't done. Leave all of your riches and come to follow me. And it says that that, that man turned away sad and left. And Jesus said, it's, it's going to be harder for a rich man to be saved than for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So that's jesus was never afraid to offend people jesus wanted to speak truth because he knew that only truth would would set forth free and would transform lives Two, authority jesus christ gave us authority so the second one is authority three spirit filled it is a you're, you're not going to see a lot of cowards in a holy spirit filled church you're going to see a lot of people worrying you're, you're going to see a lot of people that 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 know that they are the head and not the tail that know that on halloween they're going to be going out and evangelizing and and saving souls and not participating in it you're going to see a lot of people that are going to be speaking in tongues and not ashamed that they're going to be prophesying that they're going to be in the gifts of the spirit and they're not going to be apologizing to anyone for the gifts that God has given. And number four is they're going to be preaching the cross, Jesus Christ's death, which is the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ's second coming, because that is the message. It's the repentance is that God loved us so much that he gave his son, Jesus. It's that Jesus didn't stay dead, but that he rose on the grave, that he rose and not just that he rose, but that he's coming back again to save us. So that is the House of Peace teaching. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that this, that you decide in your heart to, to go to a church where you will be challenged, where you will receive the word of God, where you will come out transformed and you will come out not wanting to compromise, not wanting to excuse your sin, not saying, oh, but that's not that bad because mira, fulani, that, that is doing this. It's not about who's doing a worse sin. It's not about competition about, oh, but I'm doing better. No, no, no. It's about what can I do to please you, God? What do I have to let go of? I want your transforming power. I believe that you died on the cross to deliver me. I, I believe with all of my heart that I can be set free because you died to come and set me free. The Bible says that Jesus came to, what is it? To undo the works of the devil. Jesus came to undo the works of the devil. Did it say to like leave it half done? No, 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 no. Jesus didn't do half. Jesus did whole. So my point, I hope you decide to go to a church that, and I'm not saying any church in, in, in particular, ask the Holy Spirit, to, but to a church that is Holy Spirit filled, where you're not going to stay the same, where you're going to grow, where you're going to, where you're going to consecrate yourself to God, where you're going to desire more of God, where you're going to be challenged to read the word, where you're going to be challenged to seek holiness, where you're going to be challenged to walk in the power and the demonstration of God, where you're going to be challenged to advance the kingdom of God. So thanks for watching. God bless you all. Have a nice day.